buying a monitor could be really difficult and intimidating to the average consumer. Today I'm here to help you understand the basics of monitors and what to look out for when buying one. Let's get started. The most looked at factor is, well, display resolution how many pixels it displays on the monitor itself. This range is, but the most common one is 1080 by 1920. This is like most TVs you buy on the low end now. There's plenty of other crazy high resolutions and some even being ultra wide or ultra ultra wide because bigger is better, right? I think. In most cases, high resolution means higher price. And there's also a premium on those ultra wide monitors as well. Then there's color space, which determines how many different colors your monitor can display. Again, better color space means more expensive monitor. More expensive monitor means less money in your pocket. Then there's display type. Typically one's better than the other, but that's not always the case. Each one is different and they each have their own pros and cons. It's kind of hard to explain them all, so please enjoy this graph. TN usually, usually here, not always, has not so good viewing angles. Most monitors have pretty good response time and only the real hardcore gaming crowd search for super low response times. As for IPS, they usually give much better viewing angles with decent response time. It's not as good as a TN panel, but good for things other than gaming. But IPS does, however, deliver much better when it comes to color. Then there's also refresh rate, which determines how many images you can see per second. The typical amount for most monitors is 60. And in most cases, other than gaming, this is perfectly fine. It's even good enough for gaming, but a lot of people tend to go crazy overboard, even up to 240, which is fine, but for your average consumer, not so much. You don't need it. You won't. Then there are some things that get lost behind the display, and I mean that, literally. What I mean is, Features. There's vase mount compatibility if you want something that can be mounted using a universally accepted mount. A tiltable height adjusting stand on monitors also add to the price. And so do features like USB pass-through ports. Sadly, these are features that can be taken for granted sometimes and they can be really, really helpful. And another thing you should also be looking at is the fact whether your monitor supports good Ports. What I mean by this is you don't want to buy a display that may not even work with your computer because it doesn't have the right connection options. A lot of more budget friendly displays only have VGA, which means if you own a laptop or a computer with only HDMI ports, it, it won't play nicely with it. As you can see, many factors play into what's a good monitor, and each one is subjective to the person who's using it. A person who primarily games may find more use in good response times as well as high refresh rates. But on the other hand, a video editor or photo editor would care more about resolution, color space, as well as color accuracy. The standard refresh rate would be good enough for those type of people. So be careful when you're trying to find the right monitor. Anyway guys, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment, and well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.